At Scott's Richmond practice, concerned owner Kathy is bringing in nine-year-old baby Gina. Hello. Hi, Kathy. How are you? Good oh, to see wow. you. Oh, that's baby Gina. This is baby Gina. <gasps> oh my God, she's beautiful. Thank you. I think so. I love baby Chino's quirky face, but it's a face that perhaps only a mother could love. I'm shaky, yeah. haven't you? The unique little dog is a pugalier, a cross between a pug and a King Charles Cavalier Spaniel. He's such oh, a funny dog, amazing. and around the streets of St Margaret's, she gets quite the uh, response, doesn't she? She does. She, does. she? Yeah, she gets uh, she gets a smile from everybody, mm. a few laughs. Oh, <laughs> you, baby. But you're lovely. Yeah. She you? is super lovely, and I love the fact you haven't pointed out her most distinguishing feature. <gasps> I was about to ask. <laughs> yes, yes, a little sideways <laughs> tongue. Totally it's not something you see every day, is it? But that's not what she's in for today, though, is oh, it? Okay. No, today it's her legs, her yep. um, wobbly legs, yeah. Okay, let's get you in the in consult you. room, hey, and have a chat about your legs. <laughs> yes, come on in. Down we go. Baby Chino has been a patient of mine for the last six years, ever since she came over with her mum, Kathy, and the family from Australia. She's got an incredibly memorable, beautiful face. She's got beautiful brown eyes. She's got an incredible personality. She's a really lovely dog. And was she always, how can I say this delicately, um, characterful? <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean in her appearance? Yes. Yeah. Initially, she was a very gorgeous puppy. Yeah. Everything was in the right place. Mm -hmm. But then as she grew, some of her bones seemed to start twisting, not only in her legs, but also her face. And now, it's just really recently that you've started to see that she's actually limping, is that right? Yeah, she's, she's limping a bit. She's not walking as far as she would used to or chasing dogs in the park as much. If she is running, I notice she stumbles on her front paws. They seem to sort of collapse underneath her a bit. Oh, dear. All right, well... It's it's twisting little... out more and more. Yeah, I mean, straight away you can just see they're like, they're like flippers of a seal, yes. aren't they? They're like yeah. that. Yeah. But particularly, I feel the right leg is dropping down even more and you can see she's putting a lot more weight on the left. Yes, lifting the right up a little bit, aren't you? So I'll start with that one first if I can. Okay. So you can just see how naturally it wants to just splay out that way. Yeah. They should be standing forward like that and on the toes. Can I feel the other one now? Okay. So it isn't just her face that is interestingly put together. No. Unfortunately, her limbs also are not that well designed, sadly. And what's happened is over the years, by being in the wrong shapes, yes. they've started to wear away at various joints and probably stretching various ligaments. Okay. And now I think what we're seeing is sort of critical mass. So we're going to okay. pretty much do a, a dog x-ray right. um, and look at all of these joints and just see how they're faring. Okay. And then we can work out the best plan moving forward. Okay, great. Right. Yeah, that sounds good. Does that sound good? Yeah, you can get your so, no, I want to go home with mummy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel better that her legs are going to um, be examined under x ray so we can find out exactly what is going on with her. Nice big cuddle with Auntie Jess. Oh, Brenda. And more importantly, whether there's anything that we can do to help her. Okay, x ray. The real difficulty with Baby Chino is that she's got four limbs which are abnormal. X-ray. So you really do need to understand each joint and take very careful steps to try and correct them because sometimes you can fix one only to make another one worse, not better. X-ray. I think that's enough X-rays for Baby Chino for one day. A series of 12 X-rays show baby Chino's problems are much worse than first thought. Moving forward, it's very clear that her body is being damaged by the shape of her abnormal limbs. And as a result, there is a really big question mark as to her future because it's all about quality of life. And eventually, it might be that she doesn't have any. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Scott. Got a few pictures to show you. Great. Come on in. Thank you. So we've taken okay. x-rays of pretty much every nook and cranny of your little okay. dog in order to understand better what's going on. Mm -hmm. So what we actually have is two limbs, both have different issues, okay. but both causing discomfort. Right. So that's why I think it's best that we send you to a specialist right. and he'll best advise us and then we'll work through 
baby Chino and her beautiful abnormalities. Okay. <laughs> Ah, uh, here she is. Hello. Hello. Yeah, baby. Oh, Hello. she's off. She, Hello. she wants to go home. Hi. <laughs> Gorgeous. Yeah. You all right now? Yeah, it wasn't too bad, was it? Hmm? Kathy will take baby Chino to see orthopaedic specialist Michael Hamilton to work out the best way to fix the little dog's painful limp. Let's see if we can get your legs sorted very soon. Yeah. Downstairs, one of Scott's other vets, recent graduate Phoebe, needs his help with an emergency case. This is Chester. Yeah, hello, mate. He's just sedated at the moment. He's just sleeping. The owner brought him in because he's been vomiting and had really bad diarrhoea for about a week now. OK. Um, so we did some blood tests and it's all pretty normal. And then we did some x-rays and, well, do you want to have a look at the x-rays? Yeah. Oh, wow. The 11-month-old Cocker Spaniel has something suspicious lodged in its abdomen. What do you think it is? Do you think it's like a staple? Or... Yeah, it's definitely a bit of wire, isn't it? Yeah. Very weird, but it shouldn't be where it is, which is right in the middle of this dog's intestines. Yeah. Certainly the reason why little Chester would have been vomiting so violently for so long. Let's yeah. just have a look and see how long it is. It's about nearly one and a half centimetres. Half, so so... be about... Yeah, size. that could be a staple, I guess, then. Mm. The reason that wire is so concerning is that it's got very sharp edges and it can get stuck at points. It can even perforate the gut. If it does so, the dog can get something like peritonitis, which can actually be life-threatening. And the fact that the bloods are OK means that hopefully it hasn't yet perforated, but there's no doubt that that needs to come out and needs to come out straight away. The procedure that we need to perform with Chester is for an exploratory laparotomy where we go inside his abdomen, we have a good look, we try and locate where this piece of wire is and take it out. Yeah. So let's just give him his GA. You're a good boy. Upstairs, Chester's nervous owners are waiting for any news. I've been really worried about Chester today. It's been really upsetting and really worrying, um, you know, wondering what, what was going to happen to him today. Guys, come and see your boy. Oh, God. Oh, oh no. Chester. Oh, my That's, God. That's your little man. Oh, mate. He's like, what have you done to me? It's a little bit like what he's done to himself. Yeah, actually. exactly. Well, this time around, he's decided to eat a staple. Oh, my God. It's out of your office. That's out of my office. <laughs> he's got a bed underneath my, underneath my desk where he sleeps. Right. So that's, that's his comfort when, he's, uh, when, when I'm working from home. It really was a close call for Chester. He really has dodged a bullet or a staple. Although he's still very floppy and very sleepy, he is alive and I'm sure that he is going to recover beautifully overnight and be sent home with a clean bill of health tomorrow. I'll look after your boy. Have Thank a you. lovely night's sleep. Much. Thank you very much. And uh, Thank you. sort out your office, would you mind? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Come on, baby. Let's go and see Michael. See what he says about your wonky legs. Near Marlow, Kathy and daughter Maddie are on their way to see orthopaedic specialist Michael Hamilton with nine-year-old baby Chino. Good morning, everybody. Well, how do you do? I'll shake your hands as well. <laughs> there we go. Hello, you. There you go. Like the tongue. Very good. Right. So, come on in, guys. All right. Let's have a little look. I'm hoping that Michael will be able to advise us on the best way forward for Baby Chino. The main thing that we want is to make sure that she's pain free. Right, guys. So, uh, I'm just going to have a little watch of Baby Chino wandering about. So, tell me why you guys are here. Well, since she was about one and a half, her front paws have both started to twist out. Yeah. She had x-rays at that point, but it was felt that no orthopedic yeah. input was needed. Yeah. And just in the last few months, I feel that they're twisting slightly more and she doesn't seem as comfortable. Yeah, she's certainly got bendy front legs, hasn't she? She and, uh, has. Slightly kind of bowed back legs as well. A little bit more twisted on the right-hand side. It's quite hard to actually 
pick a lameness in here though. You know, I'm just kind of seeing if there's anything glaringly obvious. I mean, that, that front right leg certainly looks like it's twisted up more so than the left. Yeah. Straight away, I look at Baby Chino. She's an interesting looking dog. The tongue rolling out and the, the twisty legs at the front. But really to get a decent look at what's going on, we need to see her at kind of second gear. So we need to take her outside. Right, let's have a look, let's have a look. That's interesting. So she's laying on the front left leg. Yeah. If you do that once more for us, that was perfect just at the end there. Right. So the nod is the good leg right. on the front, when you're looking at a front front leg lameness. Okay. So when you put down your sore leg, you throw your head back up in the air to take the weight off. Mm -hmm. And then when you put down the better leg, it looks like there's a nod. It's not necessarily yeah. a nod, it's just the weight coming back into a more normal position from an abnormal position okay. on the sore leg. Seeing her outside at a, at a faster speed, it's actually the left side. So it uh, looks to me quite deceiving. So um, yeah, it's the left leg, not the twisted right leg. So with the back legs, if you watch her very carefully, she's got quite a nice little action of the back legs, mm -hmm. but she's kind of stamping down her left leg just a little bit because she'd rather spend a bit less time weight bearing on her back right leg. So she's slightly right. lame on her back right, mm -hmm. looking at her from this way. And then when she's come back up the hill, she's actually lame on the on the front left. So front left right. and back right leg. We need to have a real good check over. So uh, okay. let's okay. go back in because it's freezing cold. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I hadn't actually noticed a problem with her front left leg. I thought it was more a problem on the right side. So it's quite a surprise when Michael told me it was mainly the left leg that uh, is causing the issues. And hopefully that's all that he finds. If they have a sore elbow, this is a little test that we do. Mm -hmm. She's not worried about that though. Good. So that leg, twisted as it looks, is actually mm. not that sore on clinical exam. Right, okay. so, uh, so we're just going to turn around. Mm -hmm. And do the same on the other side. Okay. So let's just check your wrist again, first of all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, let's just check this elbow then, right, ready? One, two, three. Oh, didn't like that, did you? Okay, okay. I think if you could ask her how she feels, she'd probably say that her elbow is uncomfortable from time to time, but she probably wouldn't say that it's screamingly painful. That's Willie's back legs. So she's got very bowed back legs, hasn't she? You can mm -hmm. see. She's a little bit more lame on the back right leg as well. If you just put a hand under her tummy there for me, Manny, right at the back. That's her kneecap, which is a little bit on the loose side. Okay, okay. She stretched her cruciate ligament on there probably quite a long time ago because her shin bone is actually sitting a little bit further forwards than it should be. So um, I think what we do is we address what is by far and away the worst leg, which is the front left leg okay. at the moment. And then we can kind of see the wood for the trees a little bit. Yeah. She, she, she might not need anything doing on the back legs. Okay, I mean, you know, it's, it's a very individual set of circumstances, yeah. to be honest with you. So the plan is then, so she's got a sore elbow and it's the kind of thing that we see very commonly in Labradors and Rottweilers and German Shepherd dogs. Uh, she's got pain just on the inside of her elbow. So what, we, what we'd like to do is see if we can get a camera inside that little tiny joint. It's part investigation mm -hmm. to see what's going on, and then you can often do the treatment there and then at the same time, arthroscopically keyhole surgery. Okay. I see dogs with limps, and the reason they've got a limp is because something hurts. Now, how painful it might be is, you know, it's a, it's a kind of a sliding scale, but a dog with a limp has got a sore leg, and it's my job to try and fix it. Yeah, okay. I'm getting nervous now, okay. It was difficult to say goodbye to baby Gina. I could see that she was getting quite anxious, um, getting a bit shaky. Come stay with us. Right then, I'll see you shortly, right? Thank you. But uh, I'm confident in leaving her here though with Michael. I know that he'll do a good job, take good care of her and uh, hopefully fix that leg. Right then, baby Gina. You ready? In Richmond, a couple of familiar faces are arriving at the practice. Owner Pam with her two-year-old British bulldog, Barkley. Come on, come see me. Hi, Pam. Hi, Hi Barkley. Hi. Hello, boy. Hi, Charlie. He's in for his facelift. I promise you're going to make him even more irresistible to oh, girls than he is already. Oh, really? No, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, oh, I do. I love you. Ever since he was a tiny, squidgy, gorgeous pup, Barkley has been coming to our practice. We absolutely love him. Well, can I tear you away from the girls just for a yeah. second, mate? And yeah, we better go. Okay, 
Go into yeah. the concert room and chat about his eyes, yeah. shall we? Yeah, fantastic. Come yes, on, big boy. Yes, Leave yes. Maz alone. Hello, hey, Maz. Oh, my goodness. OK, excuse me, everyone. I just need a moment. Oh, <laughs> he is gorgeous. Scott's been a huge fan ever since a much smaller Barkley came in for his very first vaccinations. You have got an incredible face, haven't you? It can't be said that you're someone that you'd forget easily. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, my face does get remarked on a lot, doesn't uh, it, Barclay? Very yeah. characterful. <laughs> Barkley is now fully grown, and the trademark rolls of skin around his face are causing serious problems. The big issue, of course, with a lot of British Bulldogs is these facial folds. Yeah. Now, I know you put a lot of work in to keep these clean, yeah, don't you? it is, daily, literally. And it's cleaning and wet wipes and pseudocreme, you know, so it doesn't get sore and infected. All these skin folds, Yeah. they're actually leading to this in-rolling of his eyelids mm -hmm. and, and causing him some irritation. Yeah. Roll, 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 normal. Barkley is suffering with a condition known as entropion or in-rolling eyelids. So he actually has his eyelashes rubbing against his eyes 24-7. It's really irritating. We've tried lots of different ways to try and manage it. But unfortunately, now he's fully grown and mature. The eyelids are like that and like that to stay. And then also what he's got, which is quite abnormal, is the development of what's called ectopic cilla. So, eyelashes that even shouldn't be there. And it's just so irritating. I mean, when you get one eyelash in your eye, you know how irritating that is. And he lives 24 seven with that rubbing. So that's yeah. just not, no. not pleasant, no. isn't no. buddy? No, we need to make you comfortable, don't we? So what we'll have to do is two things. Mm. The facelift, which is taking sections of skin away from those eyelids and basically kind of rolling them back out and lifting the lids up and down yeah, yeah. and rolling the natural eyelashes out. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, we're going to have to freeze the extra ones yeah. that are just living along the lids, which are growing sort of in yeah. a curve into the eye and yeah. really irritating. So sort of a, a two for one. You're getting the faux treatment, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, he's beautiful looking face kind of. Stay the same. Yeah. 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 Honestly, I could chop a yard of skin off this yeah. guy and he'd still have too much. But no, he will look exactly the same as he does now, but yes. just with non-irritating eyes. Yes. We want to make That's you comfortable. That's what we want, isn't it? All right, mate. You've got to come with me now, haven't you? Yeah. You've got to say goodbye to your mummy, who I know you love, because you're a mummy's boy. Yes, yes you, you are, are not hey? you? Yeah. And then Uncle Scott's so got to really sort you out. Mm. And I'll see you a bit later, yeah? Barkley definitely thinks he's in safe hands with Scott. He hardly wanted to give me a backward look. He's, he's off down with his yeah, chum downstairs now, so he'll be fine. Probably thinks he's off out the back to the pub afterwards, but it's OK. Yeah, I think so. I always like to see them woken up just to see how it looks once their muscles kind of take hold again. OK, let's wake this boy up. sleep off the anaesthetic before hopefully going home with his owners this afternoon. Hello, mate. Look at that. I can see your eyelids. That's good. Yeah. You might not think it now, but you're going to feel so much more comfortable in a few days. Yes, you are. You have a snooze and a bit of a snore. I'll call you mummy. So they're a little bit anxious because they've just been in the car, but they're very well behaved. They don't bite or anything like that. So no. okay. I'm sure there's going to be... Stories of bonus. <laughs> Upstairs, vet Phoebe has brought in her pet rabbits for an important round of vaccinations. Right, come on then, out you come. And helping her is Nurse Sam. So this is Millie and Lily. They're both boys. <laughs> when I found out they weren't girls, I was going to try and rename them Philly and Billy, but it didn't really stick. So we've just gone with Millie and Lily, unfortunately. It's so important that if you are considering getting rabbits, that you get two. They groom each other, they eat together, they lie down together, and a human to animal bond can't really replace that. They really need their own species, and one of the biggest welfare problems in rabbits is loneliness. Let's have a little listen to your chest, Millie. You can probably feel her heart going just as much as me. <laughs> yeah. It all sounds fine. So all good for your vaccination. Like all pets, Phoebe's rabbits need an annual vaccination. OK, 
Okay, so it just goes under the skin. Because of the rise of a little known but deadly disease. There we go. Well done. I'll get Lily out. Rabbits need yearly vaccinations just like dogs and cats. Heart sounds fine. There are two main diseases that we vaccinate against in rabbits. Myxomatosis, which most people have heard of, and then another lesser known one called um, rabbit viral hemorrhagic disease. But now there's a new strain of rabbit hemorrhagic disease called RHD2. Most of the time it will present a sudden death, so it's probably a lot more common than people think. There we go. Well done! Didn't even notice. You're a very good girl. I mean, boy. <laughs> There are one and a half million pet rabbits in the UK, and 50% of them are thought to be not properly vaccinated. I need to vaccinate and I need to encourage others to vaccinate as well. I'll give her a proper mohawk with a 50s quiff. It's a good look. <laughs> I don't think she's impressed. <laughs> Hello, mate. Ah, oh, look, much more back to your normal self, aren't you? There he is. Just give a little groom before you go home. Hey, come on then. Cocker Spaniel Chester has recovered from his big surgery to remove a staple from his intestine. And now he's almost ready to go home. Hey, let's go see Auntie Reagan, shall we? There she is. Hi. <laughs> oh, Chester. Hello. The most beautiful eyelashes I think I've ever seen. I know. Let's just check you over real quickly, champ. Hey. Yeah, so his colour's so much better. Got nice moist gums again, that's good. Let's have a little look at your tummy. Let's just put your dressing on, good boy. All right, so we'll give you a little, little brush. Yeah. After some pampering from Nurse Reagan. But his mum and dad can't wait to get him home. Yeah, absolutely. Chester has the all clear to go home with his owner, Michael, who has been waiting upstairs. Hey, is that now I want to be groomed a bit more? <laughs> Come it's on, quite mate. chilled out here. Yeah, let's pop cool. his lead on. Here we go upstairs. Here, Here we go. go. Look, in your own butler service. <laughs> Here we go. See you, Chester. Say bye. <laughs> Say bye, Reagan. <laughs> He's up here for you. Hey, who's that? Who's in there? Who's that? Chester. Say bye. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, if he decides that he's going to eat normal things in future, that we won't have this happen again. Yes. Fingers crossed, eh? Fingers crossed. Hmm? Chester was really lucky this time, and although it was a very close call, he's pulled through just fine. And hopefully, when he comes back, it'll just be for a cuddle, but I will have to hide the stationery. <laughs> Brilliant. One last question for you, though. Do you want to keep it? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. Do you want to make it to Julia or anything? I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll, I'll let you make that decision. <laughs> no worries. All right, then, my boy. You've been such a good little patient. Yes, you have. You're a good boy. Anyway, right. well, th thanks a lot. You're very welcome. Lovely, thank you. All right, see Cheers. you soon. Come on, Chester. Bye, mate. Oh, speedy exit to the door. <laughs> see you, buddy. No more staples for you. Okay, baby, Gina. Count backwards from 10. At his practice near Marlow, orthopaedic specialist Michael Hamilton is about to start surgery on little Pugalier baby Gina. Right then, baby Gina. There you go, you can wake up in this nice comfy bed. But in some cases it doesn't though, and we just gotta prepare ourselves for that. There we go. But it, it went well, I'm, I'm pleased we actually managed to do the surgery arthroscopically, because um, it is quite a challenge in these tiny little dogs. Right, I'll see you shortly. Night, night. Okay, baby Gina, let's go. Now then, should we maybe get you to walk in to see your mum? It's the morning after baby Chino's elbow operation, and the Pogalier can't wait to go home. Hey, okay, baby Chino. Good girl. Good girl. Pleased to see you. <laughs> Waiting patiently is baby Chino's worried owner, Kathy. So all went well. Um, okay. We found what I thought we'd find. We found a little, a little kind of crack. Yeah. So we've removed the little corner of bone and we've cut the little tendon, as okay. I thought we might. And we did it all arthroscopically, which is quite good going, I think, for yeah. a five kilo dog. So, um, so far, so good. She's actually walking quite well. So um, hopefully she gets better. 
With the painful front leg now treated, Michael expects that the stretched cruciate ligament on the back leg will have a good chance of healing without surgery. We just gotta wait and see. Sometimes it's a slow recovery, sometimes it's up and down. They're all different. So uh, what, what I would say is if she's, if she's kind of better than pre-op by two or three weeks, that's a really good sign. <laughs> there we are, right then you, off you go and recuperate. And we'll see you in six weeks, okay? Uh, well, all the very best, you take care, all much, right? Michael. My pleasure. See you then. See you, baby Chino. Bye-bye okay. now. That's good, isn't it? Hey, look at that. Back in Richmond, a much brighter-eyed Barclay is also ready to go home. His eyes are gonna feel so much better, aren't they? Yes, they are, yes. Owners Pam and Darren have arrived and are curious about how their big boy will look after surgery. The longer we've had him, he's become more and more part of the family. So just can't imagine life without him at all now. So I can't wait to see him. Look at that! Yeah, you're oh, happy? Oh, well, yes, thank you, Scott. Oh, you're welcome. You never doubted you for a minute. Yeah. yeah. So you can just see his eyes are just a little bit more open now, you know? You can yeah, just yeah. see that that eyelid's rolled out, and also we removed those nasty, very irritating hairs on the top of his eyelid. So he's sort of, the top been done, the bottom been done. Oh. And uh, oh. hopefully he looks uh, yeah. the way he always did, Fantastic. just without the irritation. Oh. So how long is it before he can go back to like his dog it's training and, that and things like that? Well, so. the stitches will come out in 10 days and the swelling also will reduce as well. So what you see now won't be the finished product. Yeah. I actually think it'll look better and better. Yeah. And I'd say 10 days and he'll be pretty much back so, to normal. So he needs to have one of the <laughs> cones of shame, unfortunately. Oh. Yes, that's right. can do <laughs> that. But he'll need but to not, wear. Not showing off his plastic surgery to the other dogs and to... Oh, to so yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he doesn't, want to, he doesn't want to be cocky, does he? No, well, <laughs> this is it. So you'll have, more, you'll have more lining up coming in for the procedure, <laughs> won't you? I can see his beautiful brown eyes even more clearer now. It's just amazing. And the, the rest of his face is still, it's still Barkley. It's still, you can just see the discomfort kind of almost has just melted away. But to complete Barkley's makeover, Scott has some homework for Pam and Darren. What I would like to see now that I've done my work is that maybe we just okay. have a little bit like... less Barkley than we do now. I think he's, he's a bit too cuddly. You know, right. so yeah, just, just a little bit less Barkley, I think, is the optimal Barkley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I absolutely love Barkley. He's such an incredible character. But at the moment, he is carrying a little bit of extra weight. And I know that Pam and Darren are such dedicated owners and they're going to want the best for him. Being a British Bulldog, the leaner and the meaner, the better for him and his future health. So it's all for the right reasons, to make our boy as comfortable still as possible. You've got that yeah. massive, massive character, haven't you? Keep the character, lose some pounds, <laughs> and then I'll be happy. <laughs> all right, mate, it's time for you to go home, Hey, oh. eh? oh. Great to see you guys, yeah. as always. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. much. Thank it's you for right. doing such a great job. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah. <laughs> hey, baby. That's it. Losing that leg. Six weeks after her elbow procedure, baby Chino's rehabilitation is going well. So we do one leg. And Scott is calling in today to check on her progress. Well done. A couple of times a day I have to do physiotherapy with baby Chino. Stand on this one. That's it. Oh, you're so good. Getting strong, aren't you? She seems more comfortable now on the left leg, a bit more confident to use it. So yeah, it's hard work for us all, but well worth it. Here you go. Hey, Kevin. Hey, I think this is looking Hi. very promising. Hello, gorgeous. Hey, How's she been going goodness. since the procedure with Michael? Yeah, she's been doing really well. It's a bit slow the first few weeks, but I think she's she's um, starting to prove this week. She's got a lot more energy and uh, yeah, she seems to be doing really well, which is yeah. great. 
The last time I saw Baby Chino, she had a number of sore limbs and she was starting to struggle. But after going to Michael and having a procedure to clear out one of her elbows, it does seem that five weeks later, she's moving much more comfortably and she seems a much happier self again. Oh, that's good, that's isn't it? Do with your legs. Nice, equally yeah. weighted, and, but moving her backwards and forwards sort yeah. of forces her to put weight on each leg, which that's is great. Right, yeah. And we make it a bit more tricky, don't we? Let's pick up this ball. Oh, wow, now you're just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> what I can see is that Baby Chino is enjoying the session. She's putting in the hard yards, and so are you, mm -hmm. and getting a good result. Yeah. You know? Because yeah. the fact of the matter is, is that your dog is uh, not put together in the most perfect fashion. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if you were designed by God going through a Picasso phase, you know, <laughs> yes. just a little on the abstract side. <laughs> yeah. But, That's a good analogy. <laughs> yeah, but I think that, you know, she is responding well, she's smart, and, you know, I think the two of you together are gonna get her through. Yeah. yeah. So we rename you Picasso. Yeah. That's a good name. Yeah, Picasso. Scott also wants to see how Barkley is recovering from his surgery to ease irritation to his eyes. Yeah, you can't be okay. Since Barkley had his surgery, his eyes look bigger, brighter. I think the bigger eyes allow for a bit more mischievousness in Barkley. We're good with that, yeah. Hello, guys. Hi, Scott. How are you doing? Good to see you. Oh, hello. How are you? Hello, my Thank boy. Hello, my boy. How are you? His eyes, open-eyed ears. Hey, hello, yeah. hello, my boy. Well, I mean, certainly what I'm looking at looks pretty good. His eyes look clear and comfortable, yeah, no, would you say? Exactly, yeah, a lot better, yeah. Right? brilliant. Yeah. Looking at Barkley's eyes, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. His eyes look a little bit bigger. The lower eyelids are rolled out. The whites of the eye are white, they're not red anymore, and he's not scratching or bothered at it. So actually really happy with the result from the surgery. I can't believe he's still got the same Barkley face as well. You know, all that yeah. surgery you had to do, so it's a fantastic job, really fantastic. Yes. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. We're more than happy. Well, it is true to say the proof is definitely in the pudding, um, although I would like to see a little bit less pudding. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, here's to Barkley feeling much more comfortable and rediscovering his waistline. Yeah. <laughs> now you'll Cheers. see that. I'm going to put him on the couch to 5K. Very couch to 5K. <laughs> Did you hear that, mate? Just, <laughs> just take it slowly. <laughs> yeah, slowly. Start Cheers, a couch to 500 metres, maybe. <laughs> Good on you, mate. I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.